race number two of the day for the mini challenge about to get underway. Cars grinning up now ahead of our second 20 minute encounter of the afternoon. And um, the first race, which was won by James Gordel, has tightened up the championship battle slightly. Unlike most of the championships racing here this weekend, though this is not the final race of the season. They will be back out again at Snetterton in October. Uh, where it will all be decided. But what we can learn today is what the margin will be between the two of them uh, going to that final race of uh, race uh, weekend of the season, the final two races of the season. At the moment, Nathan Harrison still holds the lead by just 19 points, though, over James Gordon. It's continuing to come down race by race at the moment, with Gordon enjoying a nice streak of good finishes uh, in the latter part of the season. Uh, a streak that he'll be very much hoping he can keep alive uh, for this race here this afternoon. It's a partially reversed grid race though, of course, so we've had uh, a bit of a jiggle of the order. And so Jiggy, James Gordle, down to eighth position on the grid. The top eight reversed, that means that Rory Cove is the lucky man that gets pole position with Lee Patterson alongside him looking for his first victory of the year but Lee in a bit of a return to form last time out at Brands Hatch was able to get a third and a second but was obviously only seventh in our first race earlier on today so I was handed a, an amended result for this race as well with um, three cars being given 15 second uh, time penalties but that didn't affect any of the outright front runners apart from Ben Palmer Ben Palmer was inside the top 10 but finished 11th in the end here, though, is how they line up for our final race of the weekend for the minis. Rory Cook and Lee Patterson, as I said, share the front row between them with James Lukes and Max Bird. He's been there and thereabouts all weekend, lining up on row number two. Then the top, uh, no, not the top two, the fourth and third place finishes from the previous race. Dan Zelos off the podium after a late move from Lewis Brown. They're fifth and sixth, respectively. Then the top two from the previous race. Nathan Harrison and James Gornall, the top two in the championship as well. Gornall really needs to get past Harrison as soon as possible in this one to continue to eat into that points advantage. Tom Rawlings and Sam Weller are just outside the top 10 and missed out on the grid reversal with Ben Palmer 11 after that with that uh, 15 second time penalty. He shares that sixth row with Brad Hutchison. Then on row number seven, Matthew Wilson and James McIntyre are together. And then the eighth row is shared by Callum Newsham, who uh, again was penalized for track limits, so he should move forward. Josh Stanton on the eighth row with him. Then it's Lewis Gaylor with William Newdham uh, on the ninth row. And then row number 10 for Neil Trotter and Will Hardy, who were the last of the two finishers, actually, from our previous race. Then we get the retirements, Keenan Dole and Jack Davidson, 21st and 22nd, with Ryan Dignam and Richard Newman, 23rd and 24th. The 13th row shared by Stuart Gibbs and um, James Griffith, with Harry Gooding at the back, because Harry was a non-starter in previous race. His car pulled off, unfortunately, at the end of the green flag lap. So, down into the... Chicane weaving around, trying to get some heat into the tyres. They go. It's a fairly slow green flag like this for Rory Cuff, but Rory is looking for what's his best finish of the season so far. He's had a, he's had top tens in the middle part of the year. Went really well. He had a nice run through Donington Park and Brands Hatch of a seventh and eighth, and then at Brands Hatch sixth, sixth, and second. His first podium so far only podium of the year then seventh at brands hatch on the grand prix circuit last time out but then 16th in race two so if you take that 16th place out of the equation he's been really consistently in the middle of the top 10 in every race so he that of course added a, an eighth place finish to that this morning so he's got the pace i think here to hang on for a podium finish maybe the question will be how quickly can our top four drivers from race one uh, James Gordon, Nathan Harrison, Lewis Brown and Dan Zelos get onto turns with the front runners because those four were a cut above the rest really this morning. Uh, the top four in race one covered by 1.4 seconds after 12 laps of racing. The next car was nine and a half seconds further back and that was Max Bird in a fifth position. So uh, those four definitely start as the pre-race favourites. So Rory Cuff then on pole position with Lee Patterson alongside of James Laux, I'm now being told, at the end of the season, uh, is uh, third on the grid. So apologies then, James Laux it is that uh, will line up, well, third on the grid, but he's the second car there. Where has Lee Patterson gone to? He was there partway around the green flag lap and now does appear to have vanished. So Lee Patterson, who should be starting between those two um, 
blue and black cars, I'm pretty sure isn't there, is he? So no, Max Bird is the first car on the outside line. So unfortunately, Lee Patterson's season of woe continues. He will be a non-starter. That's one place gained automatically for our title challengers who, amongst with, along with everyone else, is about to get into racing. Red lights go on, away they go now. And the rush towards Red Gate Corner begins. Ben Palmer there, the red and black car, with another good start, as we saw from race number one earlier on. They head down towards the first corner, and already bits and pieces falling off Rory Cuff's car. That's never a good sign. Zelos is through to third look ahead of Max Bird, who is sideways and getting contact with James Gornall, who gets airborne and sideswipes uh, Lewis Brown. Brown is the big loser, but is there damage to Gornall's car? He certainly dropped down the order, and the man who won the first race and is second in the championship in big big trouble already he's dropped out to the top 10 and now there's a spin right in front of him two cars three cars go around it's mayhem down the crane of curves one car rejoining the circuit gets rear-ended and this is almost certainly going to be a safety car and uh, well cold rear tires in mini challenge are never a good mix and unfortunately quite a lot of cars going off the road there and uh, one of them very nearly was James Gordley. He was involved, I think, in both of those incidents. He had that contact in the first corner, and then I'm pretty sure it was him that made contact with, or was right behind at least, the car that spun first through the crane of curves. So we, I'm sure we'll get a chance to see replays of that very shortly. Meanwhile, James Laux here is attacking Rory Cuff for the race lead. He's got Dan Zelos right behind him, and the safety car is being scrambled, perhaps unsurprisingly, and uh, the race being put under stoppage because of the uh, incident, well, incidents, plural, down the uh, Craner curves. So uh, where is James Gordon? So Gordon is ninth. That is not good news at all because Nathan Harrison, his big rival, is fourth. Remember, it's Harrison that has the points advantage coming into this race, but it's not an enormous one. It came down after the uh, previous race, of course. So it is just 19 points to the good for Harrison. But Gordon, now the one with all of the overtaking to do here, really. James has had a very consistent year, never out of the top five, apart from a non-finish at Silverstone in race two. In the first race at Silverstone, it was actually Nathan Harrison that uh, had a bad race and finished 23rd. So um, Gornall and Harrison both had one bad race and one good race at um, Silverstone, but it was Harrison that came out of it with the, um, the better points haul. And that weekend was really what gave Harrison a bit of an edge in the points. Right then, <laughs> replay of the start. Good luck piecing all this together. So, down to the first corner. The first thing we need to watch for is James Gordon because somewhere he ends up making contact with someone on the inside of him and then gets launched into Lewis Brown. Now, there was their contact. I think it was um, Harrison, wasn't it, on the inside of him? Yeah, Gordon and Harrison get away fairly equally. And then Lewis Brown in front. So into the red gate corner they go. Is it contact between Harrison and Gordle? Oh no, Bird slowed. All of a sudden, Max Bird slowed, and Gordle, in avoiding him, just had no choice but to swerve in front of a luckless Lewis Brown. And then there you can see the first car that starts spinning right in front of Gordle. Um, unfortunately, with the amount of dust there, I can't see the numbers on those cars, but that was right in front of James again. Keenan Dole, I think, is one of the drivers just avoiding all of that. And. Uh, Another view of it. <laughs> well, it sort of started already. So the cars firing off left, right, and centre through the old hairpin and the crane curves. At least five or six cars off the road at one point. And those that have lost ground, well, let's have a look. Matthew Wilson, I think, must have been one of them because he's down to 23rd. Callum Newsham, likewise, down to 22nd. So they've all lost ground. And Lewis Brown, as we know, down to um, 19th position. Anyway, good news is we are racing again and the race can continue. James Laux already losing second place to Dan Zelos, is he? Dan Zelos uh, up the uh, inside. And um, Dan Zelos, I think, should go back into second place. There goes Gornall then, right behind the, uh, the first of his victims, Sam Weller. Oh, that was brave on cold tyres for Zelos, but he has got into second place now. And now Nathan Harrison moves onto his tail. Out to the old hair bit, up through Starkey's corner. Nathan Harrison in the toe, looking to try and get a podium. And of course, he'll have no remorse here. He knows that Gornall's in trouble, potentially. He needs to maximise this opportunity, knowing that Gornall has already used his drop score as well, because Gornall's had a non-finish. You only drop your one worst finish of the year. So regardless of where Gornall ends up in this race, it must count. So. James needs to make ground up, but Nathan Harrison needs to try and make hay whilst the sun quite literally does shine here at Donington Park. Gordon, though, is already ahead of Sam Weller. He's now challenging Brad Hutchison. 
and then he'll have some clean air, so we'll be able to see exactly what pace he's got. Goes to the outside of Hutchison, who doesn't have to let him through, and chooses not to into the chicane, but on the exit, I think that uh, Gordle should be the quicker of the two. Might be able to have another go then on the brakes into this corner, the Melbourne hairpin. Leading quartet to turn through, and in the background, Gordon was going up the inside there of Hutchison. Let's see, does the yellow car appear in seventh position? Yes, it does. So, um, two places gained for the championship challenger already. And now you can see if he, if he can bridge this gap to Ben Palmer fairly quickly, then he's in the lead train. So, all is not completely lost here for James Gordon at a circuit that he does like. He's won multiple races here over the years in various categories of racing. Nathan Harris, though, likewise, is going strongly this weekend. That's Lee Patterson joining in a bit late, but he's going to let everybody go through um, into Redgate Corner before he pulls out onto the track, which is sensible stuff, as you'd expect from a racing veteran like Lee. Nathan Harris uh, still stuck in fourth position, and only three positions ahead now of James Gordon. So whilst that would be a, a, a point advantage, it's not a huge one. Max Bird sets the fastest lap on the first full green flag lap, 141.663. And so that would be worth six championship points if it stays as it is. The top six fastest laps are all worth points. This, at the moment, is the main battle for the race lead. Four cars absolutely together. And Dan Zelos looking for an inside line on Rory Cuff, but he can't do it. Dan go to the outside line because then he'd be under attack from James Lax behind him. And uh, Nathan Harrison in fourth position. Sort of, you can see, he wants to get involved in this, but he also knows the risks, the risk versus reward situation is not that great at the moment. Uh, Zelos again to the outside of Rory Cuff into the chicane, but Rory fends him off once more. Down the hill then towards the Melbourne hairpin. Cuff from Zelos, and oh, Zelos looking to the inside, Harris looking to the inside, and Gordle is on an absolute flyer. Fastest first sector, fastest middle sector. This should be a fastest lap for Gordle, which could prove pivotal, and he's with them now as well. So James Gordle, the yellow and white number 18 car, Jiggy, as he's affectionately known in the paddock, is now making this a seven car train for the race lead. And as long as Rory Cuff is in front, no one's gonna go anywhere in this group. So any place that he can gain, you know, if he can gain these places quickly, he could yet win the race realistically. Although getting past Nathan Harrison won't be the work of a moment. He's forcing Max Bird to defend in the background. And Max in sixth position will go in on the tight line. Gornel looking for the quitter, quicker exit speed, trying to get alongside through Hollywood. But uh, Max Bird having none of it, gets a decent exit. Down the hill they go once again. Zelos really challenging Rory Cuff. Thought he might have had a goal on the inside there into the old hairpin, but thought better of it. Eight and a half minutes to go. Gordle does have the fastest lap, one minute 40.5. He's off the road though now, down to the old hairpin. As for Harrison, his best lap is only a 42.3, which I don't think is in the top six fastest laps. So he might not be on for any bonus points at the moment because he's stuck in the train and now gets overtaken by Ben Palmer. Ben Palmer on the inside line at McLean's. He will hopefully, he hopes at least, complete the manoeuvre at Coppice Corner. But Harrison is going to try everything to hang on to it. He hangs tough around the outside, but this runs the risk of allowing Max Bird alongside as well. Side by side then for fourth place, almost side by side for the race lead between Rory Cuff and Dan Zelos. But I think that will stay as it is. What's going to go on for fourth position? Position, though Harrison on the inside line will hold on to fourth place that was good driving that from Nathan Harrison he could have just rolled over and let Ben Palmer through but he didn't want to do that because he needs the points Max Bird and Ben Palmer now dicing and that might play into the hands of James Gordon who goes to the outside of all of them no change inside the top four for fifth it's still Palmer but Gordon around the outside of Max Bird and Max leaves in plenty of room on the exit of the Melbourne hairpin that gives uh, James Gordon a free ticket to the inside line at Goddard's and he's into sixth place now only one car separate Gordon uh, and Harrison can Gordon get past Ben Palmer, who midway through the season was looking as though he might become a championship threat. Palmer won both the races at Silverstone, had another win on the Brands Hatch Indy circuit a few weeks later, uh, but they were his only three podium appearances. In the end, there's a shunt at the final corner, and off on the left-hand side of the road is Josh Stanton. That's the 99 car. Now, who's he tangled with? That might be Stuart Gibbs, but I can't quite see the number on that car that's uh, off on the left-hand side of the road. Leading pair then have separated themselves now because James Lucas is a bit of the cork in the bottle now in third position. Harrison, Palmer, Gordon and Bird all stacking up behind him, still in that order then, so no change between our championship contenders, although Dan Zelos is still in contention mathematically, so he'd very much like the race victory here, and he'd like some clean air because he might be able to do something about the fastest lap if he could get it, but he's got to get past Rory Cuff first. 
James Lauchs was wide in the background, and so Nathan Harrison's up the inside into Coppice Corner and moving through to third place potentially. But Ben Palmer will have a better exit from Coppice Corner than either of them. Zelos is alongside Rory Cuff as well. It's a job to know where to look in this one. Let's focus on the leaders then. Down to the chicane they go. Zelos on the outside line. Cuff on the inside should prevail, but Zelos is late on the brakes. Very late on the brakes. Can he turn in? Yes, he can. And in fairness, Rory Cuff knew he was beat then and let him go through. Uh, Gordle there was ahead of Ben Palmer. And have any of them got past James Lau? Because I don't think think they have. So Laux held on to third and Gordley is ahead of Harrison and Laux. Oh no, the safety car is coming out. So I, I don't think, I don't think Gordle saw the flags. I don't know whether he overtook Harrison before the boards came out. Looks like the answer might be no, because I think he's trying to pull off to let Harrison go through and Nathan will now drive back ahead of him. So that, was, that got caught my attention for a second. Unfortunately, though, a second safety car period. This must be because of the schmozzle we had at the last corner. What number is that car? Is that number 70? Eight, possibly. Uh, no, it's not 78, is it? It's number 20. There we go. Oh, that was close. It was almost 78. Richard Newman. It was uh, a red, uh, red, white, blue car, but it's Richard Newman's car that's uh, off at the final turn. Cornell um, down into sixth place then for the restart. Not much chance of any of those drivers beating that fastest lap time, but of course, there is a possibility that Dan Zelos with clean air could do it. Out of the final turn they come then. Two laps to go here at Donington Park in the JCW class of the Mini Challenge. And Dan Zelos leads the field down to the first corner. Keep an eye to Harrison, Palmer and Gordle. Fourth, fifth and sixth. There they go through Redgate corner. Nathan Harrison, who hasn't actually had the ultimate pace in this race I might have expected from the man that finished second in race number one after a brilliant late move on Dan Zelos but uh, he's sort of been stuck in the queue. In fourth place, James Lauchs has a big moment in front of him. And Ben Palmer and James Gordon fifth and sixth, uh, not really on his tail, actually. So Harrison does have sort of free reign to attack James here. To Schwantz curve, and James has a little think about getting up the inside of uh, Rory Cuff, who is rather boxing them all in here. Rory Cuff uh, looking for a podium finish if he can get one. What would be his second, second place finish of the year? Laps goes to the outside. Harrison and Palmer are side by side behind as well. And I think that James is going to lose out here because Nathan Harrison gets the better exit. Palmer needs to decide which way he's going. He sort of sits in the middle, then he goes to the inside line. That's going to benefit James Laps potentially, but they're all going to catch Rory Cuff again as they hit the chicane. And Nathan Harrison, very much thinking championship there, did not force the issue. He dropped back in line. Big moment for Ben Palmer over the curbs, though. And so James Gordle gets alongside him. Has he completed the manoeuvre? Yes, he has. So James Gordle into fifth position. That's an extra uh, three championship, no, two championship points that that was worth. The next position is worth three championship points, but it's really worth more than that because the next car in front is Nathan Harrison. It might not be for much longer, though, because Harrison's up the inside of James Laux into Goddard's corner, locks up the tyres, but goes through into a podium place. So Gordle now needs to try and get through as soon as he possibly can as well. Across the line they go then down to Redgate corner and Harrison actually has Laux fighting back again now into the first turn. Harrison and Laux wheel to wheel, but James Laux is not going to be able to go back ahead. This is not helping Nathan Harrison though really because now Rory Cuff is escaping and James Gordle is getting closer behind. So if Harrison finishes third, he gets 40 points. If Gordle is fifth, he gets 34, so I think they'd be equal on points now because Harrison's scoring six more points that but that all changes again because James Lamps bounces his way along the grass out of the old hairpin, and Gordle will make a very easy pass around the outside. I think Lamps has damaged the front splitter on that car as well. As that happens, Nathan Harrison catches Rory Cuff, so Rory Cuff is now starting to defend. That's going to back Harrison up into James Gall, the, the last man that Harrison wants to see behind him. And because Nathan still is being boxed in here, he's not had the opportunity to improve his lap time. So he's still not on for any bonus points, whereas James Gall will still hold the fastest lap. Zelos hasn't yet been able to beat it. His first flying lap was three tenths slower, and this is the last lap of the race. And actually, Zelos is not improving. Oh, Harrison with a real good exit from the chicane. Dives to the inside of Rory Cuff, and James Gordle has to try and go with him, and does go with him. Gets to the inside as well. So Harrison goes second, and there's contact there. Rory Cuff locks up and bang in 
into the side of Nathan Harrison and the championship leader is off the road through no fault of his own at all. James Gordon and Rory Cuff tangled and Nathan Harrison, would you believe it, is the man that gets elbowed off the road. Dan Zelos is going to take the victory, but James Gordon with the fastest lap and second place will take the championship lead because remember, Nathan Harrison already had a 23rd place finish he was dropping. I reckon that's going to be enough for Gordon to take the points lead into the final race, uh, two races of the season. What drama on the last lap of the race. What a shame for Rory Cuff there that that had to end in contact. He will limp across the line a long way down the order, but the angriest man at Donington Park, no doubt, will be Nathan Harrison, who will come across the line in 21st position. So that will not be a dropped score because it's two places higher than his previous worst, which was a 23rd place finish at Silverstone. And wow, look at this. So Cuff tries to come back at Gordle, locks up, hits him, breaks the front suspension, can't stop the car and wallop straight into the side of Nathan Harrison, whose car is undamaged. But the real damage was done by the fact that we just had a safety car. So everyone's bunched together. And rather than losing six or seven places, as he would have done if that was 20 minutes into a race and the field had spread out, he ends up falling all the way down to 21st position, Nathan Harrison. And that will be worth, still worth 12 points. So... Oh dear, right, let's get the calculator back out then. So he gets uh, uh, 12 points added to the uh, 662 he was on. So that's now 674 for Harrison. Gornel, meanwhile, held on to the fastest lap, so that's six points. He also scores 44 for being in second position. Add that to his previous uh, haul. Well, we'll work that out in a second. Here's another replay look. Cuff bang into the back of Gornel and then just can't stop the car. He's got broken steering and poor Nathan Harrison. Absolutely nothing he could have done to avoid that. And uh, well, that was real, real drama for the championship contender. And that unfortunately will take him out of the championship lead. Here then is the result. Zelos, three and a half seconds clear of James Gordle in the end. Ben Palmer comes home in third position. And then in fourth place for Jack Davidson. James Laux hangs on to a top five. Max Bird sixth, Sam Weller seventh, Brad Hutchison eighth, Keenan Dole ninth, and Lewis Brown rounds out the top ten from the back of the grid. Sort of went unnoticed, but that was a good drive from him. Uh, then James McIntyre, Ryan Dignan, Harry Gooding, James Griffith, and Callum Newsham will round out the top ten. Matthew Wilson then is 11th, Will Hardy 12th, Will Newnham 13th, uh, with Stuart Gibbs and Rory Cuff to round out the top 15. Then Nathan Harrison in 21st position will score just 12 solitary points. And that will drop him now, I reckon, about 13 points off the championship lead going to the final two races at Snetterton in October. It was a bruising encounter, that one, in the mini challenge, but that was quite the race and quite the dramatic finish and what's been a dramatic day of racing in general uh, here at Donington Park on the Grand Prix circuit and uh, the cars being led into the pit lane and uh, there will be some discussions to be had about that but that really looked like a racing incident it's not like James Gordon took Nathan Harrison out it's not even like Rory Cuff did it on purpose he went for a move on Gornel Gornel blocked there may be a discussion there as to whether he blocked too late, but I mean, it looked like there was room for the two cars. They just touched ever so slightly at the worst possible moment. And Rory Cuff, sadly, had Harrison not been there, he'd have skated straight on. There'd have been no more contact and we would, would have all been fine. But unfortunately for Harrison, he was in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, well, Dan Zelos with the win. Now, what does this do to Zelos's points all as well? Because of course he gains 50 points for a race victory, doesn't he? Uh, well and truly, <laughs> one of the front runners now. Jiggy James Gordle there showers him with champagne. And uh, Gordle it will be that leads the championship going to Snetterton. A fantastic pair of races, though, from the Mini Challenge. I hope you've enjoyed them. Uh, I know I have some brilliant racing all round. Well done to Danzi, lost the winner.